Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Pori Ranch stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! First one is titled, Took on a Shady Chicago Towing Company and Won. In the spring I decided to use a massage gift card at a local chain and scheduled one for 10 a.m. on a Saturday. Of course I forgot about it until my alarm went off at 9.45 and I saw the calendar alert on my phone. Cue an enormous freak out because if you forfeit the cost of the massage, nearly $100, if you don't show. I woke up my husband and begged him to drive me because his car is parked right out back and mine is parked a block away. He begrudgingly got out of bed and we ran to the car. I arrived 20 minutes late and he agreed he would wait for me in the parking lot of the shopping center until I was done, since at this point my massage hour was nearly halfway over. My massage goes great, but when I come up to the desk to check out the woman working there apologizes and says that while I was in the room my husband received a boot on his car when he left the parking lot to grab coffee. She says it happens all the time, even to workers of the shopping center, because the towing guy just sits in his truck on the property and waits to boot people. She said she ran out there and tried to stop it and argue with the guy that I was a paying customer, but the towing operator just laughed at her. They gave me half off the massage for the trouble. I run out and hope to argue our case. My husband is upset. The operator told him he would remove the boot if his boss said he could. So my husband called and tried to explain but the minute he admitted to leaving the property the boss said, I have you on tape admitting you left the parking lot. You're screwed, nothing you can do, pay to remove the boot. I tried to defuse the situation by explaining that I was a paying customer and thus we didn't technically break the rules of the parking lot. The towing guy says we have to pay, but that we can argue our case by calling the office afterwards. We pay. When we get home I call the office and explain and the guy who answers just says, I talk to your husband. He's in a hole. Maybe if he hadn't been such a dick I would do something about it. You can try and call back tomorrow and speak to a different manager but I don't know that they'll help you either. Great. Now I'm fuming, my husband is upset, and it's my fault for making him drive me in the first place. I proceed to do a ton of research on towing laws and reporting fraud. I file a report with the BBB. I email the owner of the company. I file a report with the city of Chicago. I do everything I can think of and then I just forget about it. $140 is a chunk of change since my husband is in full-time graduate school and I'm working long hours to make ends meet, but we'll survive. Two months later I get an email from the city saying that they reviewed my claim and they side with the towing company but that I can call to dispute. I do. Tony, the guy handling my complaint, tells me that the towing company sent over a recording of me. The tape is listed with my name, case number, where I admit to leaving the shopping mall, parking lot. I tell him, that's impossible. I literally never left the parking lot, so there's absolutely no way you could have a tape that has me admitting that. I tell him my whole story. Tony says he will discuss with his manager and get back to me. I get a call later in the day and it's Tony again. He says that he listened to the tape again and that something isn't right. The woman on the tape the towing company sent over admits to leaving the parking lot to go to the liquor store across the street and buy wine. So it's not me. He strongly infers that they're trying to screw me over, without actually saying it, and says that he told them to send the correct tape by the end of the day or refund me my money. Tony calls again the next day and says that he can't legally be the middleman but that I should call the company and give them my information and they'll send me a check. I do. I'm sweet as sugar to the grumpy man on the line. One week later a check comes by certified mail. I leave a voicemail for Tony worshipping the ground he walks on for believing me and fighting for me. I know this might seem lame, but to anyone who has ever had to deal with a shady towing, booting company it's the biggest win possible. I was walking on air for weeks. I thought it was a little more than petty revenge, but maybe not exactly regular revenge. Thanks for reading this incredibly long tale. Update. Today I got a letter in the mail that the city of Chicago sued the towing company for breaching contract and won $1,040 for improper placement of boot. 
They messed with the wrong girl with a lot of time on her hands. If they'd simply removed the boot and admitted they're wrong they'd have been out nothing. Now they're out 10 times what they charged me for the booting. Next one is titled, So you want to take my fridge for free by tricking me? Jokes on you. So, my dad had a store that is at least three floors underground. This store was being closed down and we had to hand it over to the property owner empty. If there is anything that they would need to discard themselves, they would charge us a highly inflated price. After we emptied out the store, the last item left was a four doors Coca-Cola fridge that you can see in your typical gas station, Delhi. If the property owner, management has to discard it, that means the charge alone for discarding will cost us not only our deposit, but then some. We have called the Coca-Cola distributor who gave us that fridge to pick it up. They said that the age of the fridge and being under three floors down, the cost to take it with them will not be worth it for them. They won't take it back. Then my dad asked me to hire some people on our own and pay them to properly discard it. I asked my dad, being the fridge running and all, what if I get to sell it? To which he replied, if I can, then whatever I get for it is mine. I go to this business district where you can find new and used restaurant items being sold and bought. Tried a couple of stores with the picture of the fridge in my phone and most said if it was on the street level, they would pay me five to six hundred dollars depending upon condition of it. But they will not pull it up three flights of stairs. Then I found a guy who had a flatbed truck and said he is willing to give me four hundred dollars for it. He and his folks will pick it up. Great. Few hours later I go to that store along with him and his buddy, I know, two people to pull that fridge up, I was just wondering about that myself. I remove the shelves of the fridge so that when they drag it up, the glass doors do not get destroyed. These two guys pulls the whole darn thing up all by themselves to my amazement, as I was praying that they don't get crashed to death underneath it, as I will be liable for it. After they put it in the flatbed, they tell me that they will not pay anything for it and if I do not like the deal, then I myself can take it off of their truck and do whatever I want with it. I see that they put me in a pickle. To which I respond, fine. Just take it. The main guy then says, guy. Okay, can you give me the shelves from the store, I locked the store up when they took it out of the door. Me. I can't open it back again since we have to vacate the premise for today. I will hand over the keys tomorrow and then I will pick it up and keep it for you I guess. Now the petty revenge part. The next day this guy calls me back. Guy. Hey can I get those shelves please? I can't do anything with this fridge without those shelves. Me. Sure. It will only cost you $400. Guy. What? Cursing me. Then I will go and leave the fridge into that store or next to it. Me. Be my guest. We have officially handed the keys over and that place is not my responsibility anymore. Anyone throwing any trashes there will be responsible for their action. And you know this place is full of surveillance cameras. Guy. You said you were gonna go back in today. Me. Just like you lied and played me, I lied too. Right after you left, I went back in, got those shelves and handed our keys to them. Guy. Curses me a lot. Tell me where you live, blah blah blah. I just hang up and block his number, I used my Google voice number for him so it was very easy. My parent asked what happened. I said, sure I did not make any money, but you wanted to pay for it to be removed. Look at the bright side, I got it removed for free. Next one is titled, Woman gets fired from ENT's office. Not sending my referral was apparently the final straw. For the past five years, I've been dealing with an illness that is both me, NT ally and physically disabling. I found out that part of it is PCOS, but there's something else wrong too. So after months of going to multiple different incompetent ENT doctors and going through a bunch of tests, I finally just said screw it and took charge. One of my most debilitating symptoms is severe vertigo, which I noticed has something to do with my ears. So I told my GP to just refer me to an ENT to see if I can at least get that taken care of. So I get in to see the ENT, and I instantly like her. She's competent like any medical professional should be, and I know I'm in good hands, finally. My dad has a rare autonomic disorder which can only be diagnosed via a tilt table test. 
The ENT said my problem can be migraines, a weed allergy, and several other things. But due to the fact that my dad has that illness and it's hereditary, she wanted me to get tested for that first just to get the most serious thing out of the way. So I leave feeling good about it. But three weeks pass and I hear nothing. I figured that since it's a pretty serious test plus Christmas and New Year's happened, it was just taking a while to be approved by insurance. But once I reached that three-week point I started to get irritated that nothing was happening. I mean, my life has been ruined by whatever this is. I don't expect a miracle, just for people to do their job. So I gave them a call and had to leave the ENT's nurse a message. She promptly called me back and left a message thanking me for telling her because she had been waiting for the results this entire time thinking I'd already done the test. She said it appeared that my referral had been sent on her end by the lady who's in charge of sending them. She told me she'd look into what was going on and get back to me. So I played the waiting game again. Luckily I didn't have to wait long this time. She just called me back today and told me that, as it turned out, the lady didn't even send my referral to begin with. So I had been held back because of her. The nurse then proceeded to tell me, and I quote, that person is no longer working here. She got fired. I presume this wasn't her first offense, but seeing as it seemed to be the final straw, I feel an extra sense of satisfaction knowing she got fired because of my referral. Edit. More good news. It's literally the day after and the testing place called to set my appointment for February 1st. Amazing how efficiently things go when people do their jobs. Edit 2. Someone was asking for an update, and I just got one. Nurse called me back and it looks like there is something up with my blood pressure. I'm getting sent to a cardiologist and I'm also getting tested for allergies just in case because it seems like I have more than one thing wrong with me. Next one is titled, City Bus Driver Stopped at Burger King. Result. He couldn't have it his way. Graduate school in a Midwest college town, winter 1980. I usually walked the half mile from my apartment to the shared office on campus. On the coldest mornings I used the bus stops in front of both buildings. I was almost always the lone passenger on the earliest Sunday bus. One day a driver new to the route double parks in front of Burger King then goes in. It's BK, so he had to wait. So did I after the second time, I decided he deserved a little revenge. From then on my day pack contained a windbreaker and wool cap that were different colors than what I was wearing. Next time he stopped, he left the bus the same way, out the door, walk around to the driver's side, reach through a small window to close the door, then into BK, leaving the small window open. I closed and latched the small window, walked to an emergency exit window over one of the rear tires. Went through, using the tire as a step onto the empty street. Ducked around the first corner, put on my windbreaker and changed caps. Returned to the street, walked toward my office, checking occasionally for his exit from BK. He couldn't open the small window. I watched long enough to conclude he couldn't get into the bus. I'll bet he had some explaining to do. Never saw him again. Last one is titled, Trip my baby brother into the pool and nearly drown him? Have fun sleeping in the pool house, Uncle Shithead. So I will admit it was shitty on my part but I'm gonna give my reasoning. It was warranted. So me, 17 male, and my younger brothers, 15, 14 plus 3, live with our grandparents. Our mom passed away when baby was born, dad six months before. Anyway, due to everything a lot of family has moved in with us, we live in a pretty large house and they're all freeloaders. My grandparents will never turn them away, so whatever. My youngest brother is my responsibility mostly, which like I'm fine with, my grandparents did all their parenting. I got a job so my grandparents usually watch him for a few hours. I was at work and get a frantic call from my 14 years old brother. Uncle Shithead, purposefully, tripped baby over and he fell in the deep end of the pool, and everyone stood laughing. Luckily my other brother dragged him out, but he was spluttering and I needed to get home quick. My shift manager is amazing and let me leave, had to rush baby to the hospital and we were there for a few hours. It was dangerous and terrifying. So after he was asleep, I snuck downstairs. He's an alcoholic and was knocked out cold. 
I basically dragged him out to the pool house. It was about 2 in the morning, and no one besides me and baby wake up before like, 10. So he was in there for a while. Anyway, I leave him on the floor. I will admit I was slightly hoping for him to roll over into the pool. Locked the door and went to bed. I left the key in the door, something I never do because of anxiety, so I wouldn't be the first suspect. Eventually my aunt, his wife, slams into our room, screaming about trying murder him. I'm like, what the hell woman? We're all called down, yada yada. Now my nan points out that it obviously wasn't me because the key was still in the door. They immediately go to blame my brothers, but I pointed out that they were in bed by 9 because I tucked them in, yes, even the older two. Losing both your parents in 6 months does that to you. They've been arguing all day. Who put him out there? It obviously wasn't any of us. I'm not really sure how they skipped over questioning me so quickly, after all I lock up every night. I was the only person genuinely angry at his actions. He's pretty sick, with a nasty cold. He's been trapped in his room, and baby is really wary of him now so that actually pretty good. Either way, I'm taking the boys to McDonald's for dinner. This wasn't the most climatic, but it sure felt good to me. Thanks for listening.